So now we're going to talk about motors tonight, and uh, we'll have to do it very quickly because we have a lot to cover in a very little amount of time. Prints done. Really? Yeah. Oh, show it to me then. Uh, we we have a few three D printed parts, but uh, this is basically what a motor looks like in real life. So what we're going to do is we're going to take apart a motor. So this is basically what a motor looks like. What we're going to do is before we start breaking into this, I would like to explain how a motor works. So motors basically have these two magnets on two sides. Where's the red pen? Oh my God, this place is a mess. Can you guys slowly start cleaning this place out? Yes, thank you. This is a knot pull and this is, this is a knot pull and this is a soft pull. So say red represents north based on our magnet. And this is south. So this is what we get. Now, this is basically uh, two 3D printed pieces that uh, uh, one of our team members, Nanzil, has done and has done a fine job at it. It's basically to, it represents the two sides of the magnets. So we're going to be using this to actually explain how motors work. So what happens is uh, between these two, we have something like a coil. So sadly, we don't have a legit coil to show you guys. So uh, we got someone to, we do? Really? Oh, well, uh, that's not bad. That's not bad. That's, uh, not bad, not bad. by works. the way, this is insulated copper. If you're curious, this is not uh, copper which conducts. It's actually insulated. And uh, you can say it, see that from the color of the copper. You can actually scrape it. it. It's supposed to have a more pinkish sort of color once you take off the covering. So it's actually covered in this transparent plastic sheath. What we can pretend is this eraser is a coil. Say this is the coil of a magnet, all right? And what we're going to do is we're going to label the corners and we're going to give directions of current flow, all right? So first of all, say this is A, this is B, this is C, and this is D. And uh, if we say these are the sides, then what we're going to do is we'll also turn this into A so that it matches the same side. We know that side A is this side. And um, similarly, this would be B, this would be C, and this would be D. Oh, look, I've already made a print on it. So, so these are the sides, right? The, the sides of our imaginary solenoid. So here, what I could do is I could place it like this. And in this case, this would be A, and this would be D. All right, now, Let's say we draw a coil here, right? Is that all right, guys? Yep. It's a nice coil, isn't it? Very nice. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Moonmoy, thank you. So now what happens is, say we have current flow in this, and the current flow goes from initially A to B. And if it goes from A to B, then obviously on this side it has to go from C to D. Isn't that correct? Guys? Yep. Yeah. So what's going to happen is, let's, let's use left hand rule, right? So if we use the left hand rule, why do we use the left hand rule? Because we already have existing current flow, right? Yes. Shout out to Nanzil for the 3D printing. Yes, thank you, thank you. That's going to buffer out too. A lot of buffering going on. So basically what happens is, um, if we use the left hand rule, if current flows from A to B, then force field current, right? Yes. So we need to figure out which way the force is uh, if the field is from north to south. So if the red one is north, so it's going to be like in this direction, right? And the current is going to be in this direction. Does this make sense? Yes. So the force is upwards. You can, you can actually do it with your own uh, left hand and you're going to see that you should get a force which is upwards, right? So what's going to happen is AB causes this to rotate upwards, right? So let's, let's put this on an axis. This is why we're going to use toothpicks. All right, guys, so this is a motor. All right, I know it looks a little sad, but uh, it's cute. So anyway, if current flows from A to B in this direction, what did we see? That the force is going to be upwards, right? If you do your left hand rule again, you're going to see the force is upwards. Um, how did we do it? Force field was this way, current was this way, so force was upwards. So this would cause this to rotate like this and in this direction. And what happens on side CD is that the current would be downwards. If the current goes downwards, if you do force field current again, force is going to be down, field is going to be this way. Sorry, current is going to be down, field is going to be this way, and the force is downwards. So basically what happens is it rotates like this. Now here's the interesting thing that happens when you reach this point. The thing is that if this is B, oops, 
if this is B and if this is A, on this side the current flows in this direction, right? Guys? Yes. All right. So once it reaches this position, um, which way should it experience a force? Nowhere, because there isn't any change in flux linkage. Well, interestingly, it's still up, right? Force field current, so the force is going to be upwards. But oh. this will not cause any turning effect. Okay. Why won't it cause a turning effect? Because the force is acting through the pivot. So what's going to happen is, and the same thing happens on this side, if, if it's downwards, it's going to get stretched and get stuck in this position. So the motor would actually turn and then get stuck here, right? So how would you uh, prevent this? Even if it did have momentum, what would happen is it would say go a little bit this way, but because the force is still upwards, it's going to pull it back and keep it here. Yes. So what you must do is, once it reaches this position, you need to flip the direction of the current flow so that this up can be reversed into down. And when the moment you turn this into down, what's, this, what's, the, what's the result? The force acts downwards and it's going to continue rotating. But then again, you're going to face the same problem when this goes 180 degrees. So what do you have to do? You have to reverse the current again and again and again and again. If you can somehow do that, then the motor is going to constantly keep rotating like this. Does this make sense? Yeah. Right? So I hope you guys uh, are getting what I'm saying. I know it's a sad little situation, but uh, uh, it's cute. So now wh what we do is we reverse the current flow every 180 degrees. That's the essence of what needs to be done. You have to reverse it once it's here, right? When the coil is vertical, you have to reverse the current flow so that it can continue moving in the same direction. And then another 180 degrees, you have to reverse it again. Another 180 degrees, you have to reverse it again. Another 180 degrees. So basically you keep reversing it around and around and around and around. So that's basically what happens. So that's what needs to be done. We achieve this by using this thing called a split ring. So I really can't make a split ring right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna explain what it is. So what happens is, uh, if these are the two ends of our coil, uh, two pieces of wire would be coming out of these two ends, and there's like these two semicircles stuck to it. Nanzil made a pair of split rings. Where are they? Which is 3D print Koluna? So yes, basically this is a, an attempt at making a split ring. So basically it's two pieces, and um, it would be stuck here at the ends of this, but it's not so big. Let me show you how split rings look in real life. This is a motor, right? You'll find this in uh, any of the toys that you had when you were a little kid. And uh, yeah, you can try this at home, actually. Do try this at home. It's just your parents might be a little angry. It's all right, they forget eventually. And when you become an engineer or something, like, oh, I'm actually a valo engineer. They say this stuff. All right, so I've taken this apart. So this is the commutator, right? These, these little carbon brushes here. And this is the inside of the motor. So you might see it's not pretty similar to the design that we just saw, but uh, the parts which do match, let me explain those. So this is a magnet. This is a magnet also. So this is basically the two black sides are two magnets. I'll show them to you. And in between we have a coil, but it's uh, made or designed a little differently. And you can see, you can actually see the split ring here. There's a there's a lot of grease on the split ring. That's to ensure. Commutator? Huh? Commutator or cover? So this this piece of this cylindrical piece of metal, it's split into three parts. So basically it's like a split ring, but it's made of three parts. There's a split. Do you see the split? Yeah. There's one split. Then there's another split here. And another split. Over there. So this is basically what the split ring looks like. So um, that's basically um, the, the split rings. And the ultimate target of the split rings is to allow current flow in the same direction as we continue rotating. And we call them split ring commutators. So basically this is the commutator bit right here, this thing. So what happens is if we were to put this back in, if I could put it in back in properly, you would see, do, do you see that, that uh, the split rings actually, oh, 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 there we go, almost. Oh, I'll have to rotate it and take it back. So I think that explains the concept of how the commutators, basically the whole split ring moves, but the commutators remain stationary. So that's basically how this works. So the interesting thing about motors and dynamos is they're literally the same thing. If you just take a motor and then start spinning it really fast, it behaves like a dynamo. 
So this is the last thing I'm going to show to you guys before we finish. I haven't tried this myself. So like, you know, like always, we can always fail. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to connect the two ends to of the, of the motor to the galvanometer. And now if I spin this, there should be a deflection. Do you think there's going to be a deflection? Uh, yeah, there should be. Okay, let's try. Moment of truth. Oh, oh it works. Oh, did you see that? Did you see that? Dexter, Dexter. Aja, check it out, Aja. Spin. Oh. I'll turn it in the opposite direction now. Oh. Whoa. Oh, damn. Damn, damn. So, oh, it fell apart. Wait. <laughs> so, so, yes, that's basically uh, how the motor works. So, yes, and this is a motor. If you just take a motor and if you spin it really fast, then um, that's it. Uh, you basically have a dynamo. And uh, there, if we wanted, a, if we had an AC supply, then we would call it a slip ring. Interestingly, we see a couple of things in the coil itself. Number one, it's split into three parts. That, that's because it just makes it more efficient. Number two, this is a soft iron core, which makes the magnetic field get channeled in a more efficient manner. And it's also laminated. Do you see that? It's also yeah, broken into yeah. splits. It's like the transformer itself. And the reason we do that is to make it more efficient. It doesn't heat up too much. And you can actually see the connections of the copper wires uh, with the commutators here. There we go. You see the connections right there. They look pretty nice. And last bit, uh, we have two um, ears inside here. Oh, I don't just think just they... take the compass around it too. Yes, I'll just take the compass and show that. Oh, sure. Eta irukum dekhabana. You have to pull it out first. Um, okay, wait. Let me try with. Do we have any longer screwdrivers? I could. Obviously, I don't want to cut myself. Oh, wait. There's a way I can take this out. I just need to get rid of that clip right there. Annoying. Oh, oh, yes. And it's out. Now, we can pull the magnets out. So, see. Yalla. <laughs> so, yes. These are basically the magnets. And it, there we go. We can identify the North Pole. And we can identify... That was the South Pole, so yeah, we can identify the North Pole here, and we can identify the South Pole here. So basically, this is like this magnet, and wait, South South is blue, and this should be a North Pole. Whoop. If we take it, we can check it. Oh, there we go. This is a South Pole. So yes, this is basically the structure of a motor and that's that there you go you guys got that yep, yep there we go all right then guys take care guys uh thank you for your time uh there's going to be a little gap and then we'll be back soon with uh, the next stuff that we want to teach Stay okay tuned for the next season oh, of <laughs> <our> teachers <laughs>